Traded Corgo's port is speeding up, and the Silk Road hub is thriving again. The name of Corgos dates back to the Yuan dynasty, meaning, the place where the camel caravan passed, or, the place where wealth was accumulated. Corgos Port is a transportation hub and comprehensive multifunctional port integrating highway, railway, pipeline, aviation, optical cable, and mail. During the Western Han Dynasty, Emperor Wu of the Han Dynasty sent Zhang Qian as an envoy to the Western regions to start the legendary, Journey of Hollowing Out, and open the ancient Silk Road across the East and West. Corgos is one of its important post stations. Taking advantage of the east wind of the, the Belt and Road, and along the Hollow Road, the Steel Camel Caravan wrote a new legend of the Silk Road. On March 19, 2016, Corgos Port opened the first China-Europe train. Over the past seven years, the number of inbound and outbound China-Europe, Central Asia, trains has increased year by year, from 386 trains in 2016 to 7068 trains in 2022, maintaining a rapid growth trend. Corgos Port has become an important fulcrum of the China-Europe Western Corridor. Corgos has a superior geographical advantage, connecting the domestic market with a population of 1.4 billion at one end and the markets of Central Asia, West Asia, and Europe with a population of 1.2 billion at the other. As the junction and docking area of internal and external circulation, Corgos plays an important role in building a new development pattern and stabilizing the international and domestic supply chains and industrial chains the convenience of traveling from west to east and the advantages of two markets and two resources are constantly highlighted. Outside the Corgos port in Xinjiang, new domestic cars are lining up, ready to be transported to Central Asia, Russia, and other places for sale after customs inspection. On the other side of the road, container trucks transporting various materials have stretched for several kilometers outside the country. Central Asian countries highly recognize China's commercial vehicles, especially new energy vehicles, which has injected new vitality into Corgos's foreign trade development. At the same time, large-scale wind power equipment, general merchandise, and fresh vegetables, fruits, and other materials are also the main exports at ports. Tashkent, the capital of Uzbekistan, is walking on the streets. In the past, dilapidated buses in Tashkent are disappearing, replaced by brand new Chinese new energy buses. Previously, the Uzbek government purchased 1,000 new energy buses from Chinese companies. Bakhtiar Rachmanov, the mayor of Tashkent City, stated at the ceremony that these vehicles have excellent quality and are safe to drive, making them the best gift for the people. Central Asian countries interested in Chinese new energy buses are certainly not limited to Uzbekistan. In the Corgos Inland Port International Logistics Park, the reporter also saw a large number of new energy buses painted with the words, Buses in Almaty, Kazakhstan, ready to be shipped to the destination. The interest of people in Central Asian countries in Chinese cars is also increasing, and Chinese brand private cars can often be seen on the streets. In Tashkent, a full-time driver in his 20s, Abdullah, told me that his hobby is researching various types of cars. He clearly felt that China's automotive industry has undergone leapfrog development in recent years. In addition to hardware, the electronic system and interior design of Chinese new energy vehicles are also very attractive to him. Many Chinese new energy vehicles exported to Central Asian countries leave the country by land through Corgos port. In the past few years, the number of companies engaged in cross-border automobile trade agency in Corgos has grown from several to more than 40, with more than 1,000 drivers responsible for driving cars across the border. In July 2022, the Kazakh government unilaterally implemented a 14-day visa-free policy for Chinese citizens, making it more convenient for drivers to travel to the border between the two countries. Among the types of export vehicles, in addition to the rapidly growing new energy vehicles, the export growth of construction machinery vehicles is also very obvious. As of 2400 hours on April 30th this year, more than 20,900 commercial vehicles have been exported through Corgo's highway port, up 62.3% year-on-year. In addition to accelerating the export of commercial vehicles, due to changes in the international situation, there has been a significant demand in the European market for China's photovoltaic and heating equipment since last year, while Russia's demand for industrial raw materials in China has also increased significantly. Entering the wholesale market of fruits and vegetables in Almaty, the largest city in Kazakhstan, 70% of the stores we export or transport are fruits and vegetables. The agriculture of Central Asian countries emphasizes animal husbandry, and some areas are located in the continental climate zone of the Asian cold zone. 
the production and supply of seasonal vegetables often cannot meet the demand. There is a significant supply gap for fruits and vegetables in Central Asian countries. Recently, fruit and vegetable products shipped from Xinjiang to Central Asian countries mainly include apples and tomatoes, while those shipped to Russia are mainly colored peppers. The estimated annual export volume of fruits and vegetables is around 80,000 to 100,000 tons. The freshness of fruit and vegetable products is very important. Vehicles transporting such products can go directly to the green channel of Hanung byproducts at the port to quickly clear customs without queuing up. They can leave in the afternoon of Corgos and reach Almaty more than 300 kilometers away that night. Nowadays, transporting fruits and vegetables to Russia usually only takes five to six days, with a maximum of seven days. Corgos, which means the place where the camel caravan passes in Mongolian and the place where the wealth is accumulated in Kazakh, starts from the port. Now along the border, there are not only Corgos port, but also many landmarks such as China-Kazakhstan Corgos International Border Cooperation Center and Corgos Comprehensive Bonded Zone. The China-Kazakhstan Cooperation Center is located on both sides of the national boundary adjacent to the border area, and is the first cross-border border cooperation zone established between China and other countries. Within a fully enclosed area of 5.6 square kilometers, the Chinese area is 3.43 square kilometers and the Kazakh area is 2.17 square kilometers. On April 17, after the epidemic, the China-Kazakhstan Cooperation Center fully resumed operations. Citizens of both countries and third countries do not need visas and can enter and exit for negotiations and trade with valid documents such as passports or entry and exit permits. Chinese citizens are allowed to carry tax-free goods of 8,000 yuan per day. Hu Jinyun, a businessman from Wanzhou, Zhejiang, invested in 2016 to open a large duty-free shop in the Chinese area of the China-Kazakhstan Cooperation Center. He told reporters from First Financial that tourists are now returning, with daily arrivals ranging from 1,000 to 2,000 people. During the May Day holiday, the number of people entering the shop has doubled to 800 to 900. Chinese tourists mainly buy cigarettes, alcohol, and chocolate, while tourists from Kazakhstan buy the most daily clothing. On the Kazakh side of the China-Kazakhstan Cooperation Center, Central Asian specialty products such as camel dairy products from Kazakhstan, honey from Kyrgyzstan, and dried fruits from Tajikistan are sold on shelves, constantly gaining awareness and recognition from Chinese consumers. In 2022, China and the five Central Asian countries achieved a trade target of 70 billion US dollars ahead of schedule, and the trade volume from January to March this year increased by 22% year-on-year, showing a strong development momentum. At the same time, the trade structure has been further optimized. In 2022, China's imports of agricultural products, energy, and mineral products from Central Asian countries increased by over 50% year-on-year, while exports of mechanical and electrical products to Central Asian countries increased by 42% year-on-year. The cross-border e-commerce trade volume between China and Central Asia increased by 95% year-on-year, and nearly 300 Central Asian enterprises entered the Chinese e-commerce platform. More and more high-quality and characteristic products from Central Asia entered the Chinese market. In addition to the increasing volume and quality of multilateral trade, investment cooperation benefits all parties. As of the end of March this year, China's direct investment stock in the five Central Asian countries exceeded 15 billion US dollars, with a cumulative completed engineering contracting turnover of 63.9 billion US dollars. China and Central Asian countries have their own advantages in different commodities. While China's manufacturing industry is developing strongly, its agriculture is also highly developed, which has a strong attraction for Central Asian consumers. Central Asian countries have considerable advantages in animal husbandry, mineral fuels, and resource energy commodities. Through port trade, complementary advantages have provided a continuous driving force for the future of economic and trade cooperation between China and Central Asian countries.